Painting with natural selection is the second phase of a longer project. In the first phase, we developed Evo Repro, a simulation of evolution where virtual bacteria respond to the color of a background and grow and evolve really fast. In painting with natural selection, we wanted to make that interactive. We tested a bunch of different design options, but what we thought was really interesting and really simple was that interactivity would allow the user to paint the background, changing the colors, so that naturally the organisms would respond and evolve. So here's a quick overview of our screen. We arrived at this story of having virtual bacteria in a petri dish. So these are the instructions that were developed and were shown at the Children's Museum. We can click anywhere to get started and the colors here on the left are interactive and the user can select one to paint anywhere on the screen. The objective of this activity is to use these colors to grow the bacteria and build paintings that are sort of alive, digitally alive, digitally evolving. Over here we can see how many bacteria we have. We have seven right now. We have a timer. This timer, of course, we can set however we would like to. The user can reset the screen at any time and they can also save any painting whenever they want to. So what's happening under the hood here is really a simulation uh, which is a lot like a board game going in phases and turns uh, between each and every one of these organisms. So every time the clock ticks, we reconsider how much energy each piece of org each organism is able to acquire, uh, how it uses that energy in terms of competing with its neighbors, growing or reproducing. Each of one of these organisms literally has its own uh, genome, a set of G's, C's, and A's, and T's, and a string, uh, just like uh, the genotype of a, a real living organism in our world. Uh, but we interpret that string uh, in terms of several different kinds of behavior. Another thing that the genes encode for is the propensity to grow as opposed to reproduce. Sometimes when you see a small co a colony here where there are a lot of small organisms, what you're really seeing is the result of a genome that prefers to reproduce at, uh, at a small size and an early age for the organism rather than waiting until they're much larger. These large organisms out here have so much space to grow because they've waited until they're larger and have sent their offspring much farther away and compete less with their offspring. One of the motivators of the project was that we wanted to reach really young kids, like starting at kindergarten, and that was one of the reasons we were excited to work with Spark at the Sprout Fund. We consulted standards and talked with a lot of teachers to get a sense of what was expected in the classroom and what were people finding in the field right now. Um, and that's how we shaped the learning goals of this experience. We don't expect necessarily that kids will walk away saying the word evolution or saying that they were painting with natural selection, but we do expect that they uh, note to some degree that they were playing with something that was almost alive. Most of the kids that played with the system were very quick to start using the term bacteria too. And we hope that they walk away thinking these bacteria, they depended on their environment. So if they liked the environment, they would grow. If they didn't like it, they would shrink or die. But over time, changing the environment impacted the population. It changed the bacteria. And that, for me, would be a really successful outcome. And our preliminary results pretty much show that they are getting that very easily. We contemplated a number of ways of making this project interactive. One of the systems we wanted to use was the Connects, and that proved to be a really interesting experience as the user had to jump around and run around to try to activate all the colors and paint all over the screen. This was a really fun experience and we took it to Maker Faire in New York just this past year. But we found that for the museum setting for an autonomous exhibit, it was easier to have it uh, just working on a touch screen, and that's the type of exhibit we have at the Children's Museum in. Uh, winter 2012-2013.